In this video, we're going to talk about the Stackelberg model. In this uh, model, uh, uh, in contrast to our price leadership model, the firm now sets, the leader firm now sets the quantity, which then again um, would be responded to by the follower firm. Right? So the basic premise or the, the basic step is still the same. So we're still going to start off with the uh, follower's output because, well, this is, uh, this is how um, basically the follower will presume that the leader will, will have already set his own quantity. So in this case, the firm's, firm 2 or the follower firm's profit function would look something like this. So it's going to be pi 2 equals notice here that we have your inverse demand function but of course if you have a problem set or if you have a particular exercise that's in the standard form of the demand function as a function of price then you'll have to um, rearrange uh, you'll have to rearrange the terms for simplicity let's presume that we already have the inverse demand function q of q so q here is the sum of q1 and q2 so it's going to be a function of price so this is a minus b <clears throat> q1 plus q2 let's see bracket because this is your price let's see this is your price function multiply it with the quantity q2 now since the unit cost is zero basically the marginal cost will be zero so that will add to the simplicity of this uh this example so i take the derivative Well, I can add a star here to indicate indicate that Q1 star is already fixed. Right? Q1 star is already fixed. So, um, this is going to be the derivative of pi 2 respect to derivative of Q2. Alright, so it's going to be your, well, at first glance, it, it's going to look like your Corno model it's gonna look like your corner model but the the idea here is that um the firms move um sequentially all right so we take the derivative of this function so i can just distribute q2 across this function so you'll end up with a minus b q1 i forgot the star it's q1 star star minus sorry minus two b q two right because we'll distribute this negative b across q2 multiply it by q2 again so we get a negative two b it's gonna be equal to zero so solving for q2 Gonna be q2 equals it's gonna be a fraction, so that's a a minus b q star one over two b. So basically you have the followers reaction function, whatever whatever the firm one sets. The follower will just um take that and could take that into consideration. Uh to help him set his um, profit maximizing output so this is your profit maximizing output now from the perspective of the leader so this is um maybe we can write this uh firm two's output right. now from the perspective of the from the perspective of the leader from the perspective of the leader firm this will this will have to factor in in his demand function or in the industry's demand function so there is the, the the residual demand function for the firm for firm one becomes like this so you have p residual you still have the concept of the residual demand so the residual demand or whatever price that the leader firm will get after taking into consideration firm two's output so it's going to be p q right oh, well you can just Denote this as Q1, Q2. Right, so that's going to be A minus B, Q1 plus Q2. But we already know what Q2 is. So 
straightforward approach. Let's add in with straightforward approach. Let's just add in. Let's just add in the function. All right. Be this here. So that would that would be firm ones residual demand. So this is the demand function. This is going to be the inverse demand function that the firm one or the leader firm will use to obtain his profit maximizing output. All right. So the profit function or firm one, let's denote it as pi one. It's going to be equal to we'll take this entire price function. All right. But we need another bracket here. And multiply it with Q1. Right. Multiply it with Q1. Now it's just a matter of um, distributing this Q1 and distribute this Q1 and then solve for the derivative. Let's try to simplify this. Try to simplify this function. So pi 1 is equal to a Q. 1 minus b q 1 well this becomes squared b q 1 squared um minus b q 1 q 1 and you have a fraction here which is a minus b q one star. Well, okay, we can just add the star for consistency since this indicates that we're looking at the leader firm's output. B q one star star. Now we can take the derivative of this function. All right, so let's take the derivative. Gonna be d by one over d q one equals. So this is easy. So we just have to get a. We're gonna get a. We get another b here. So this is gonna be two b q star one two b q star. This third term is a little bit tricky because we'll have to multiply. Um, we'll have to multiply this. We'll have to multiply this across. Right. Then again, you can just stick with the bracketed term. So this becomes when I multiply this back in here, multiply this back in here, I'll get another fraction. Right. 2b is a constant, so that doesn't matter. Um, so we have ab minus. AB minus um, this becomes B squared well, 2 2 B squared Q star 1 over 2B set it equal to 0 alright so I can multiply both sides by 2B to eliminate this fraction so let's uh, let's do that. Okay. So this becomes two a b two a b minus um, four b squared q star one minus a b plus two b squared q star 1 that's equal to 0 now we can move this on the other side move this on the other side so you have or you can actually combine this already so this becomes a b you can combine these two terms so you have um and these two terms you can combine these two terms so this becomes negative 2 2 b squared q 
star 1 equals um, negative negative AB now dividing both sides by 2B squared we have negative and another thing for you to check here is that if you're trying to come up with the optimal level of output that output must be positive so if you're seeing a negative sign and you cannot cancel out the negative sign it means that you're wrong or you're, you're doing it wrong right so notice here that i'll just divide both sides by two negative two b squared and the negative cancels out so q1 star is equal to so i divide both sides by negative two b and then the negative term cancels out so it's a a b over two b squared of course the b in the numerator cancels out and the optimal output for the leader is a over 2b like what you saw in the slides right so that's how you solve this tackleberg oligopoly